Three. Welcome everyone to Manufacturing Talk Radio. My name is Tim Grady. I'm here with my co-host Lou Weiss. And we are talking with Ian Trammell, who's the Executive Director of Mechaforce. Ian, welcome to Manufacturing Talk Radio. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Hope it'll be the first of many times. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrific. Uh, the salary is good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tell us about Mechaforce. Mechaforce is interesting. It's a creation of industry. You know, uh, I think a little bit about like, Manufacturing Talk Radio, it was industry inspired. What happened was there was uh, some companies in North Jersey that uh, were heavily automating, so they were moving to advanced manufacturing more and more uh, in robotics, quality control, all different areas of advanced manufacturing. And so they were looking for people that could do that kind of work, from digital design to engineering to the process engineering to, to operators for the equipment. And what they were finding was there was a, a, not a good pool of skilled professionals in that field. So what they were doing was going to places like Germany and bringing people over on H-1B visas. And um, it was okay when they were smaller, but as they began to expand, because of course once a company starts to move more and more into automation, they become more competitive, they were finding that the, it was more and more difficult to get people to come and stay that mm. were qualified professionals. And they had experiences like the language issues. Right. They had experiences just that were, you know, culturally it wasn't a good fit. Uh, there was other times when uh, the people just became homesick and they just didn't want to make their life here. So the company may have paid, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to bring the folks over. Right. But then in the end, uh, the people went back after a couple of years. So they just were finding it wasn't there wasn't a good return on investment. Mm. So what they did is they got together and they decided that they wanted to approach education to create their own workforce pool, uh, their own workforce development program. And that's what they did. They modeled it on Central Piedmont Community College down in uh, North Carolina. And really, that took its inspiration from the German dual education model. So in Germany, uh, there's two tracks. You know, you can go to the university for more of a philosophical education, mm -hmm. or you can go to a professional vocational school, uh, what we might call a community college, for more of a formation with uh, that kind of work, that kind of vocational work. But mm. there, it's regarded as more professional. You know, they don't think anything of uh, comparing a, a doctor, for instance, to a master plumber. You know, it's that way here in America in the sense of pay sometimes, <laughs> but we don't even, we don't really give those that work with their hands, those that labor doing that kind of manual work, uh, people in manufacturing, that kind of respect that mm -hmm. they might have in Germany. And so that's one of the things that you know we've been dealing with as well as this program is getting feet under it and trying to respond to industry needs. Is the German program still what it was way back when, when they had these three, four, five year apprenticeship programs? Is that still the way it is? Yeah, from what I understand, I have a trip that I'm hoping to take to Germany soon. Um, it's very much integrated into the culture. And so there's an expectation that companies will hire people out of these apprenticeship programs once they're done, and they get certain tax credits and things like that. Fortunately, we have a lot of insight as to what the program uh, entails because a lot of the industry leaders that we have on our advisory board for Mechaforce come from Germany, and some of them have been gone through the apprenticeship program, started on the wow. line, and worked themselves up to be CFO or CEO of their companies. Wow. So it's a really interesting um, model for us to try to emulate. Now what does CF, I'm sorry, what does Mechaforce then do? So Mechaforce is the nexus between uh, industry, particularly in advanced manufacturing, and education, both on the CTE level, uh, career and technical educational schools, the high school level, and uh, community colleges to the university level. Okay. So it's really where all of these things come together to serve the student and helping them to prepare to be advanced manufacturing professionals. So we partner with nine different counties around the state of New Jersey, uh, some just CTEs, some 
uh, community colleges, and some counties a blend of both where they're partnering. And so we're trying to make opportunities available for normal people, normal uh, young people, adults that uh, are interested in science and technology to mm -hmm. take advantage of workshop workforce opportunities because there's so many jobs. I know I heard you talking about that earlier, how many jobs are available in manufacturing. It's right. true. It's just been echoed over and over again. And so we're trying to fill that gap and give people opportunities to have great jobs, good paying jobs, stable jobs in nice environments to be able to support a family on their salary. How many people are in, in the program presently? So presently, each county is at different stages of implementation. Uh, one county, uh, Hudson County, currently has 125 students mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. uh, that are currently enrolled. Uh, there's another county that just started up, so they've got 14 students enrolled. And there are several other counties uh, behind them that are looking to implement next year and then the year after. So it's a big range of people getting their feet wet in this. So this is basically for students. This is not for career career change people. So it is. It the is. nice thing about the program is it's a really a, a articulated pathway. So what's been laid out with NJIT, the New Jersey Institute of Technology, as the senior educational partner is a pathway for certification and for degrees. So uh, it culminates really with the bachelor's degree here in engineering technology and mechatronics, but uh, you could also get an associate's degree in cooperation with Thomas Edison State College, hmm. uh, which works with the local community colleges or the CTEs to award the associates in um, advanced manufacturing. Uh, all the way down to certification programs. So a student can come in or an adult can come in looking for a career change or an upskill and can get a certification. Uh, so for instance, uh, the Siemens Level 1 Operator Certification or the ISA, International Society of Automation Operator cer Certification uh, for Mechatronics or for instance, a NIMS certification for metalworking mm -hmm. and that could be the end of their time with the program you know this this hands-on approach to education or they continue continue going on depending on what their job needs are or depending on what you know they want to continue doing for their associates and then onto the bachelors and the nice thing is once they're in the program we have so many companies that are involved that want to recruit these students that there's a good chance that they're going to get a job and so then they can work with the company to decide uh, where they're going to go with that job they start out with. The German mentality, like I was saying before, is that so many of these students will start off you know, on the line as an operator, mm -hmm. but then have opportunities to move in other areas in that company. It doesn't just have to be that one particular job. A lot of uh, the CEOs on our advisory board talk about um, how big and how vast advanced manufacturing it is. This isn't just the person that's there at the machine working. It's also opportunities in marketing, finance, executive positions, uh, sales. It just runs the gambit of all these different areas of work in advanced manufacturing. In some of the uh, interviews that we've done over the last two years with manufacturers, we've run across this before where companies are moving their people around so that they're multi multi-capable of doing many different jobs and ultimately into a management position. So that's, a, that's right. what's being done. That's right. So that's an exciting feature of all of this. You know, it creates a lot of opportunity for the person and also a lot of flexibility within the company. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes them competitive. You know, they're able to backfill a lot of these positions. Now you're the founding member for uh, right, so I'm the founding director, I guess you would say. Okay. I was the first, I was the, the director for Force 21 and when it was founded by the initial group, the initial working group, and then as we expanded outside of Hudson County, became more statewide in terms of the impact than Mecca Force. It was renamed Mecca Force, and with this, this broader scope, I became the executive director, and now I work with companies all across the state. I work with, uh, as I said, educational institutions in nine different counties. And, um, you know, it's been very interesting. I've been learning a lot. <laughs> um, how, how excited are the educational institutions to jump in on this? 
I think they're excited, but there's a little trepidation because it, there's an expense, an initial expense to buy training equipment and find faculty. You know, as we heard earlier today, you know, um, Sean McDonald stood up and asked a question during the uh, at the end of the panel from a Middlesex County Vocational Technical Schools, and how do we find the right faculty? And that is definitely one of the challenges. And so, while they're excited, you know, there's a, a reality that has to be part of implementation of a program like this because there's a lot of challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, during the time that we were uh, giving our uh, keynote, uh, we talked about uh, uh, steel uh, manufacturing and how they went to the local educational uh, facilities to group together multiple manufacturing companies so that they could train for many different talent very very many different skills and uh, it apparently it was quite successful up there. I think that's one of the things that we've been talking about, the need for partnership and not just partnership between education and industry, but partnership among industry. Not one company typically, unless you know you're like a massive company like BMW or something, uh, you not everybody can create a human resource environment where you're recruiting and you're developing the person's career internally throughout their entire time with the company. Mm -hmm. It does just takes a massive, you have to have massive cultural control on that company to be able to achieve that. You know, for smaller companies with a couple of thousand employees or a couple hundred or even, you know, two or three employees, they need a way to partner with each other uh, in a way that's not where they're not competing with each other for business, but in a way where they're able to ally themselves to be competitive. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the benefits of a program like MechaForce. And we continue to be industry-led. That's a huge part of what makes us so special. You know, 51% of our board uh, will always be industry leaders. The other part is made up of a quarter um, educational partners. Uh, to represent that segment of what we do, and then uh, the other quarter is, uh, you know, affiliations like New Jersey Business and uh, Industry Association, NJMEP, those are the German American Chamber of Commerce of Greater New York. These are the sort of the affiliations that we work with to make sure that all of this works together. They're sort of the oil between the gears that makes everything keep flowing. All right. Ian, are, are you seeing this happening in other states around the country, or is once again New Jersey on the leading edge here. We are leaders, I think, in the sense of partnership. This is going on in other places, the sense of dual education, but the, the footprint, the model isn't as huge as what we're trying to accomplish in New Jersey. So we are the statewide initiative for dual education and mechatronics. And the mechatronics degree or the, or the uh, training pathway is also filled in with digital design, is filled in with metal technology, uh, and it's filled in with um, sort of all this hands-on work. I just met with a company that creates yachts, and one of the things that right. they are uh, looking at is also incorporating wood technology, because all the custom woodwork that goes on. So, you know, we're partnering those companies with different schools to produce different uh, professionals with different skills and you know there's enough common skills that are needed for automation for robotics that um, it can be a good partnership even though the particular needs are a little different for each company there's enough in common where it's worthwhile for them to, to ally and work together for our listeners sake uh, would you give us your URL address if they wanted to get some more information yeah. Sure, the, the address is actually coming up now. Uh, we're in the process of putting the website together. We were in a, like the shelter mentality for a while <laughs> while we were uh, starting up the program. But now that you know we're, we're out there and we're really moving so much around the state, you know, within a year we went from one county to nine counties. Uh, now, now that external communication line is coming on, on, online now. But I could be contacted through uh, my own email address, which is Trammell, T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L, -L, at njit.edu. Very good, very good. Well, it sounds exciting, and uh, I guess you're going to ultimately be in every county in the state. Probably not. Not 
in the area of mechatronics and metal work because you come to a point where it gets saturated. Yeah. So we want to make sure that wherever the program is, is successful and the people involved will have jobs. So, you know, at some point you get saturated, yeah. but we want to make it the best, highest quality program possible. Very good. Thank you very Thanks much for the for opportunity being on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a great day. Enjoy talking with you, Ian. Thank I you. appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you very much. Thank you.